What is going on everybody? It is Frank the Tank and today we're bringing you another bowling ball review video on bowling by Jason Belmonte. Today we're going to be looking at the Unequaled. It's another ball that has been added to the Unreal series. Um, I think the first one was the Unreal. The second one was the Unstoppable and now the third one is the Unequaled. However, I do believe that there are other bowling you know, custom-made Belmo bowling balls in this game, but, you know, they're not officially part of the Unreal series. Uh, we all know what they are if you take a look here. Of course, the Belmo ball, um, the 11 major spare ball, the new clashing wave, which was introduced into the new clash mode, um, which I have tried it, and it looks really cool when it rolls down the lane. It kind of looks like a basketball with, like, neon with the blue neon color on it and I like the weight block the star shape on it but yeah it, uh, going by the stats it looks like a good uh, mid-level type of ball but uh, anyway going with this uh, unequaled if we'll take a look here the cover stock is a pixel particle uh, cover stock with its S core weight block um, on the unreal product line and as you can see uh, the power is 6 out of 10 the hook I believe let's see four, 9 out of 10 and the length is 5 out of 10 so something tells me that this ball is going to force us to play somewhat deep going by how the hook is 9 out of 10 and the power and the length aren't really that much so um, yeah I don't really know what to expect with this ball but uh, we're going to go ahead and try it out and see what uh, what we can do with it so um yeah, we're going to go ahead and try the stroker style and see how it reacts. You know how I do. Uh, revs to the max, axis rotation to the max, and axis tilt to the minimal, which is zero. So let's see what we can do here. Um, what oil pattern should we use with this? Um, you know what? Let's just go to our default oil pattern like usual and go on Stonehenge. I love that pattern. That pattern, you can do pretty much anything on it. It allows for all styles to play uh, without, you know, any kind of problem. All right, so here we go. The Stonehenge pattern, the unequaled on the stroker style. Let's see how much it hooks. Going by the length and the power, of course, I, I, I hope it's not going to be too difficult because it has 9 out of 10 hook on it, so... I was right, so... Obviously, I sent the ball going kind of a little bit right, you can see, only to get it to come back. And I got a light hit. I ended up getting the 10 pin out uh, left. So something tells me that uh, all I have to do is a simple down and in, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, I feel that if I do play, you know, down straight down the lane and in, uh, that I might go through the nose. But we're going to find out right now. Okay, so I was on board 16 when I made that first shot and left 10. Uh, I'm going to move a board and uh, see if I can get it to go straight down and in. Because for me personally, doing that with the stroker style is really, really tough. I can kind of do it with the two-handed style easier than I can with the stroker style in this game, but we'll see. And as I figured, yeah, it did. It, it, it went more, it crossed over. It actually went... Uh, more to the one-two pocket than it did the head as I thought it would um, So let's see uh, Let's go to the 14th board There you go that that's it that has to be it so you can definitely play you know down and in with no problem I mean according to that line I sent it looks like I sent it just a little bit right to get it to come back, but I don't believe that And another crossover strike. Unbelievable. And I got robbed there. I just know I got robbed there. That was a perfect hit. Pick up that 7-pin spare, why don't we? And let's try that again. Wow. That, that I could tell, was going to... Like, that's... No surprise there, it went more towards the head, you could see that, so I can understand why I left that split. So you could definitely do that too because uh, it, it's just, just right. I mean, uh, you could see it didn't like overhook and go to the one-two, it didn't, um, 
do that thing where it doesn't like hook at all and just goes straight towards the 3610. It went perfectly to the pocket, but of course, it's not enough to just do that. You gotta be perfect with that kind of shot because you know, just a little bit off and you could either send it uh, crossing over or you could just get a very light hit and get some ugly split. Just a pinch off and it went way over to the, uh, what is that? Just hit the head pin and went more towards the two pin. And you see I got a light hit there as well. So uh, playing that kind of angle is really, really tough from the very right side of the lane. I don't like doing that. So my I, I, what I would prefer, honestly, is to just go straight down and in from the 14th board. I think that was where I was standing on. Um, let me see here. I, no, I think it was the 12th board or the 13th board that I was standing on. Yeah, yeah, I think it was the 13 board that I stood on to do that. But the tough part about it is you gotta be like really perfect with that too. No screwing up. No margin for error. See that? You gotta give it just a little bit out to the right. You can see that I sent it kinda... Look at the line. You see that? I sent it to the right just a little bit to get it to come back. Uh, so it wouldn't, you know, go through the nose or to cross over. Okay, so now we're gonna look at this on the tweener style and we're gonna see how much of a board difference we have to move. So I was on board 13 with strokers, so we're gonna see what we can do as tweener uh, with, um, let's see, 50 degrees axis rotation, max revs, and no axis tilt. Okay, so I'm gonna try this from board 25 and see if that is the right board. I'm honestly just taking a guess here. I have no idea where to stand, uh, so. Let's see if this is the right board or not, or if we have to move. And we got the big four, it went through the nose, pretty much. Yeah, right through the nose. So we need to move more left as it overhooked. So, let's see, 25, we'll go to 28 and see if that's enough. And we're almost there. We are almost there. It kind of went to the pocket, but still more towards the head when it hit the pocket. So therefore we need to continue moving left. We were on 28, we're gonna go to 30. And there's our strike. So there you go, 430. Jesus, from 13 to 30? What about that? So I'm, I don't think it is 30 now that I look at that. I mean, that that first strike that I got us standing on board 30, it did seem like a light hit. And looking at that now, I think I'm convinced that definitely not the right board. Look at that light hit with the lucky strike. That, that should have either left me like a split or maybe even left the 10 or the seven or something. So I think we're gonna try uh, what the game has automatically done for us. And that is adjusted to board 29. And we're gonna see if that's the right board. And so we hit the pocket pretty good, but as you can see the ball, the way it, de it deflected as soon as it hit the pocket went more towards the 10. Uh, that's an obvious indication that we still are too far left and we need to move right. So here is what we are gonna do. We're gonna, I think we were on 29, so we're gonna move to 27. That looked like the proper strike, that was flush. So I think 27 may be the official board for tweener and with the layout that I have on it. And I think that's it, 27. I mean, that went a little, little, a little bit high. Um, look at that, kind of just a little more towards the head, but it, it, it looked like it went flush after that. So uh, I think 27 is the board. It's the board. It's 427. Now I'm, a, I'm officially convinced. I, I tried several attempts to hit the, the, the corner of the dark part of the oil perfectly. Um, and going by that line, I'll take it. So board 27 for the tweener. Now that we know that board 27 uh, is for tweener and uh, board 13 is for stroker, I'm scared to find out what we're going to have to do with cranker and two hands. 
So we're gonna go with cranker, keep it at 50, and because we got uh, an increase in revs now, uh, I'm going to increase the axis tilt to the usual 10 degrees that I do, and see how much of a uh, move left we're definitely going to have to do, because I know for a fact that board 27 won't cut it for cranker. So I'm gonna just take a guess and try board 31. And that could be it already. I, I think we figured it out. I'm not 100% convinced though, because look at that line. I didn't aim for the proper target that I wanted to, so. I think that could be it, 4 to 31. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure though. It's not the board, no. Okay, so. We definitely gotta move left. I'm gonna go to 33, see maybe if that's the one. Okay, so I think I've come to the conclusion after so many attempts at trying to find the right line to the pocket. Uh, I think board 32 for Cranker is the move. So not, a, not that big a move from uh, Tweener to Cranker. I think Tweener, we were on board 27 or 28, and we are now standing on board 32 for Crankers. So, um, yeah, finding finding that target, uh, that right, uh, hitting the right target to get to the pocket was really, really difficult because, like I said, I don't play on Cranker Tweener or Stroker. I play on two hands, and that's what I'm used to. But, yeah, it's tough for me to be able to do that. Look at that. Unbelievable. But there you go, I think that's the one right there. So, uh, 432, I'm calling it. Um, of course, with the layout that I'm using, you guys can do whatever you want with it, but that's what I'm doing. And uh, I'm calling it right there with that layout, uh, board 32. So, anyway, moving to the, the real deal right here, two hands, max revs, keeping it at uh, 10 degrees of axis tilt with 50 degrees of axis rotation. Um, I imagine that, uh, we're definitely gonna have to go way for well probably not too far left but uh because you know i thought for sure that moving from stroker to to uh no not from from tweener to cranker that we would really have to make the move left and surprisingly we only had to move about uh, five six boards or something like that so not too bad i imagine that we'll probably only have to just move a couple boards left from cranker to two hands so we're gonna go from uh, the board 33 to board 36 and I think I made the right guess. I'm not sure. Let's see. I guessed it right. How about that? Okay. So board 36. There you go. There it is. Board 36 right there. So let's talk about the reaction of the ball. Let's, let's just take a look at it first. So that reaction, if I had to compare it to something, I would compare it to probably the Crux Prime, except this ball, like, let, let's get the Crux Prime in here. Hold on a second. Crux Prime, where are you? There you are, the ever so monstrous Crux Prime. So to me, the reaction of the ball going down the lane, it just, it looked like, uh, it, the Unequal looked like the Crux Prime, but just toned down a bit. See, like, here's your Crux Prime. See, we got, yeah, we got the proper layout on it. Look at that. Doesn't that kind of look the same thing? Like, it, it, it just goes, and once it comes, uh, like, it comes in contact with the friction, it just whoosh, right into the pocket with a serious power. So, to me, that's what the Unequal looked like, but just a little bit more toned down on the power. And uh, I mean, the hook what wasn't as much, obviously, like I said, the Unequal look like a toned down version of the Crux Prime. So I think that's what I'm gonna compare it to. And here is your Unequal. See what I mean? It, it, it has that exact same movement, but you know, just not as much. Uh, it has the hook, and uh, but it just doesn't have, you know, like, I don't know, it doesn't have that power that like like the crux prime to plow through the pins like here let's do the crux prime once more see that the pins just get devoured by the crux prime and then the unequal it does that exact same arky motion that the crux prime does but it just doesn't have it 
like the Crux Prime does. So the unequal, it, in my opinion, is a toned down version of the Crux Prime. So now we're gonna go ahead and end this by hopping into a game and see what we can do with it. Okay, everybody, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try out the new King of the Week pattern. I believe it's the 2013 USBC Open Team Championships pattern. So I have no idea what that looks like. I've never seen it before, but we're gonna find out what it is and how we can use the unequal ball on this pattern. Okay, we have our opponent, Chris Rosu, and I, I'm pretty sure I've played this guy before. And I think I, uh, he was like, he gave me a run for the money. So uh, we're gonna see how we can uh, try to prevail against him. So. Ooh, leaves the, I believe that's the four and the seven. Doesn't spare it, so, all right. Wow, the dark part of the oil, that's that's real short. I've never seen anything like that, so I have no idea what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna take a guess and try 436. Oh, okay, there, there it is, there it is, okay. So, 436, there it is. Now I have to try to nail that every single time, or at least as much as I possibly can. Oh, wow, how about that? Left the eight, but something came and knocked it over. Impressive pin action. Oh, didn't come back like, like I wanted it to. Very light hit and left me a split. Dang it, not enough, not enough guys. Oh boy, he's found his line guys, he got a double. Put that one on the grill. Oh, I got lucky there, that went high. That went very high, look at that. More towards the head, just brushed against the three, but luckily I got him all to fall. And he gets a triple play, cable internet and phone. I think I'm screwed already. I feel it. Left the 3610, I knew it. Ah. Ho oh, ho. Just skinny the three. Just skinny it. Left the four and the seven again. Hopefully he doesn't gutter it this time. There we go, he learned from him some mistakes. And he didn't miss this time. That's a good ball. Yes, light hit though, light hit. I'm not really convinced. I think I need to move to board 35 now based on that light hit that I just got. Crossed over a little bit, left the four. Spares it, nice. So we're gonna try board 35 and hope we don't get a kind of light hit, but obviously we gotta hit the right line too. That's a good one. That's the one I was looking for right there. So it's 435, we've made a successful adjustment. And it seems that Chris Rosu has answered back. I like it, it's what I wanna see. Oh, that's inward. That was lucky, I know. Don't say it, don't you say it. Oh, and he cross o crosses over too, but doesn't get as lucky as I did. Leaves the eight. Ugh, skinnies it. The skinny jeans fit just right. And look at that, he, he responded by saying yes. <laughs> Uh, that's a little off. Almost left a split, got lucky. You know, I, I admit, I got lucky there. I know what some of you are probably thinking. I missed, but luckily the ball was like slowly moving over as it went down the lane. I was worried that he would strike when he left. One, and I believe that's the two pin. 
Didn't skinny it this time. Got it properly. Picked it up the dirty way though. I saw that he hooked at it. That's a good one. That has to be. That's what I'm talking about. We're getting down to the wire here. Oh, he's splitting the tent. That is not what you want to see. Look at that. Left the six and the seven. And ends it with the 191. You know, I gotta give him his props. This is a tough pattern in my opinion. I mean, it looks short, uh, like on the darker part, but the, obviously the lighter part stretches way down there. So, you know, good game, dude. Good game. I don't know what I gotta get, but I'm not gonna think about it. Please. That's what I'm talking about. Clutch. And yeah, see, good game. Chris Rosu, if you see this, you did good, my friend. You tried. You tried. Oh, that's inward. But that's okay. That is so okay. I'm done. I'm satisfied. I was I was shaky. I'm literally, if, if, if you guys could see, like, I'm literally like this right now. It went down to the wire. There you go. Pick up that six. We'll make off with a nice 216. Definitely a good game on the part of Chris Rosu. 191, 216. That, that felt pretty intense. I'm going to have to look back later to see what it is that I needed to get the win. I'm sure it probably was just some high count, but um, yeah, there you go. Good game. Um, uh, the ball, it's not that difficult to use, surprisingly, uh, but on this pattern, it was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, the 2013 USBC Open Championships team. So, interesting. Uh, but anyway, that is the unequaled right there for you guys. Um, there it is, the unequaled. It will be available on Friday, and right now it's currently June 15th. It will be available this Friday, which I believe is on, let's see, yes, the 19th. It will be available in the Skillshot Tournament, so you guys can try to win that. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about, like, the look of the ball. Like, it looks like a candy or something like that. Like, honestly, to me, it looks like something that belongs in the standard playlist. Like, look at all this stuff. You see that? The sweet swirl, the... You know, it, it just looks like something that belongs in the standard playlist. But, uh, anyway, there you go. Um, pretty good ball, in my opinion. Um, it, I would say, um... Again, I stick with what I said. It's it's basically like the Crux Prime, but just way more toned down on uh, its hook and its power. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in this, it'll be available in the Skillshot Tournament for you guys to try to win. And I don't know when exactly it'll be available uh, as like a promotional pack for you to buy it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, there it is. That's the unequaled ball. I want to thank the creators of the bowling by Jason Belmonte game for provi providing me with this because this wouldn't be possible without you guys. So anyway, uh, that is the unequaled. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Frank the Tank and I await what comes next.